Hi, welcome to my channel Mostly Knitting. I'm Tash. If you're new here, this is a channel where I talk mostly about the knitting that I've been doing during the week. This is a slightly different episode because I've had to split one episode into two parts because I've um, been away in Japan. And so this episode is just talking about the purchases that I've made in um, Japan and some of my upcoming plans and what has caught my eye. So this is kind of like the second part of what's normally in one segment, but because I've missed two weeks of recording um, and I've had so much to talk about, I've my previous epi part of episode had um, finished objects, works in progress, and um, uh, like what, work, what knitting I took on the holidays. And then now this episode is just going to be um, what I bought in Japan, my upcoming um, plans, and what has caught my eye. Um, I think that's I think that's probably enough for um, for this episode. Right. So um, I'll start with. I went to two yarn stores, Kyoto uh, Walnut Kyoto. Uh, actually, they're all in Kyoto. Walnut Kyoto, um, Avril Pepin, and then I also went to some markets that were there in um, Kyoto. They have these monthly markets uh, on the fifteenth of every month, and we happened to be in um, Kyoto on the fifteenth. So and there was a um, there was a yarn um, store there. So, yep, so they're the three places that I bought yarn at um, in Japan. Right, so I'm gonna start with um, Walnut, which is where I went first. And I've already mentioned in my previous um, video that I bought this Duriram Natura Juliet in the colorway CL, and I've actually already cast on um, their Manhattan hat by Tori Yu. So that's one um, purchase that I made. The other things that I bought from um, from Walnut, it was such a beautiful, um, such a beautiful shop. I'll put uh, I'll put some video footage of or photos, whatever I managed to take. I'm not very good at that when I'm on the traveling. I didn't take as many photos or videos as I would have liked, but um, I took a few. So I'll put some photos and video up there. So let me see what um, what else did I get there. I bought, one thing that's actually quite interesting is I was talking in a previous video about um, 4.25 millimeter needles and they actually had some there. They didn't even know that they sold them because when I was asking for them, they couldn't find them. And I was like, oh, they're on your website. And then they went out the back and they mm -hmm. found them. So I don't know I don't know if they still plan to carry them or if they're still going to, but they actually had these 4.25 millimeter needles um, and I got an 80 centimeter and a 100 centimeter. And I almost bought some from Amazon for $39 Australian, but these were like 12 bucks, 12 or $14. So very happy that I didn't. They're only in bamboo. I don't mind knitting in bamboo. The reason I got um, four point, although I sometimes knit a little bit tighter with bamboo, so I have to think about that. But I find sometimes when I do, um, when I do my sleeves, if I'm knitting the body on a four millimeter, I, or any, any sweater size, whatever I'm knitting on the body, I sometimes go up one needle size for the sleeves when I magic loop because I magic loop tighter. But I find that, you know, that's fine when you've got like a 3.5 mil, you can jump up to a 3.75 or a 3.75 to a four. But with a four, that, that's the first jump that's a, a full 0.5 of a millimeter. And I was just thinking, ah, oh, it's just a little bit much for sleeves. So I am curious to try these, the 4.25 for Magic Loop, when the body is on a four mil. Because um, for my field sweater, the body was on a four mil, and I knit the sleeves on a four mil, because I just didn't want to go up to a 4.5. I thought they might be a little bit too big, and it would have been nice to have something in the middle. So now I do. So happy about that. I probably only needed one, but I got two. Um, now, yarn that I got there. So for the other yarn that I bought there, I bought this um, Amarisu Trek hand dye. I got three, so this is a fingering weight yarn. I got three skeins of that, isn't that gorgeous? I think I'm gonna make like a, um, I don't think I see this as a sweater. I see this as a short sleeve dress, like quite a statement one, but I just think that's gorgeous. And I know from my Ilha, Isla, Ilha, dress um that's enough yarn there's a thousand and fifty meters there so yes so i'd either make another isla or maybe the salty air tea turn it into a dress probably isla though because i really enjoyed making that so that's that that's my kind of big purchase from um walnut um i don't know why i kept getting drawn to this color they had this color in a few different bases this is another amorisu um but this is the worsted hand dyed and there's two, let me see how many meters is this, 
200 and oh, maybe it says it probably says it 200 meters so that will make a hat I don't know if it's quite enough for an Oslo hat unless I did a short brim um, may oh I know maybe the um, Pearl Soho ribbed hat or um, this hat what's this hat I'm making I'm making the Manhattan hat here so either the Pearl Soho ribbed hat which was a nice one or the Manhattan hat if I like that that pointy peak style so either way I'd probably, it starts the same right a one by one um you know tubular cast on it's got a bit of subtle variation in it you know it's a tonal um yeah see that's really pretty like a dusty rose color and the other yarn that I got from there was um this is a pretty standard yarn it's Brook Brooklyn Tweed Loft in the colorway fossil but I got this because I saw this so this is the this is another um, Japanese yarn, Daruma, and it's their, oh, look at that, it's their um, silk mohair. This is three, uh, 25 um, grams, 300 meters, and then I think this is 200 and, this is 250 meters. So I'm thinking I'll hold those two together for another um, Oslo hat with mohair. So I thought, like, I wanted to try this yarn out, and it feels really doesn't feel prickly at all feels really really nice so I think those two together um, and I'm really happy I haven't really worn it yet but I'm sure I will that Oslo hat with mohair that I just made I'll make another version so that's that's kind of a plans as well because I already know what those two are going to be together and yeah I think they'll look um I think they'll look really nice together uh, so that that's all I bought from Walnut Kyoto beautiful store I forgot to take my passport so I couldn't do the whole you know get the money back from because they do they do that there uh, the tax back I just I wasn't thinking when I went shopping and I forgot oh I didn't know I actually didn't know you need your passport but should have checked that out anyway um, the next thing was the market in Kyoto I got some really lovely presents I won't show them here but I got some presents for my daughter Mia like I got a nice um, it's a lot of handmade stuff at the markets, huge markets, um, and they're at like a temple, and really a fair way out in the suburbs. But um, yeah, like it was, it was totally worth going to. It was all locals. Like it was, it had rained a bit in the morning. There was like almost nobody there when we got there at eight because everybody gets up pretty late. The shops all open quite late in Japan, like ten a.m. Most of them. So um, it's a bit hard for us early risers. You know, I, I had to have like tea and coffee in my room. But the markets, so they had, I bought like, you know, um, little pencil cases and bags and things. Um, I'll show you this. I've um, got a mug for like, so they had ceramics. So my husband got a sake set. So I've got a mug that I'm going to take that to work. Um, I actually want to take it there because I'm more likely to, for it not to break than getting shoved in the cupboard here. So I'll keep that on my desk. And it just looks pretty. So, yep, so I've got that. And so they had this, there's this lady, I think her name's Martina. Um, that's her Instagram, at KFS underscore Atelier. And so this yarn, she is a, a German lady living in Japan. And she has had some opal, opal yarn design colorways for her. It's called KFS. So I got, um, so you can see it's like opal brand. And I got two skeins. One's got sparkle in it so pretty and one doesn't have sparkle in it so you can make this is huge like yardage like 425 meters so I could make knee socks like ski socks out of these if I wanted don't I, I went through a phase of knitting knee-high socks haven't done that in a while that's obviously a lot of knitting um, but it feels like you know when you can see with opal yarns you can see what it looks like um, yeah and there's something there's something to me that says make long socks with these so yes so that that will be big projects obviously um so i've got those two but they also have <clears throat> um these little mini like not mini skeins 50 gram skeins so i thought they would be quite nice for my little skimmer socks um because that like if i've got 34 grams i'm safe so i've got this they've they've all got sparkle in them so there's a pink a navy and a white yes yeah, so I'm really happy with those purchases uh, oh and there's one other thing I bought from I don't really know what this is this is meant to be a project bag but I think this is it's tiny but that would be really good for my little um, my little skin socks so probably
probably not as good for walking because I don't like when I'm walking that wouldn't mm, that wouldn't work, work very well um like but it definitely fits like that could be like my portable knitting in a in a handbag right um but yeah you couldn't fit much more than that in there but it was just so pretty I got it um but this is what I usually when I when I go walking I have this with a um, tangerine designs bag and it has like a little I try to wear shorts that have um, a belt loop and I just attach that to my um, uh, belt loop you don't want anything too heavy obviously because it's going to hang off your pants so um, like this this hat could be um, walking knitting but it's still that's a big ball hanging off it's not very heavy but you know I like the idea of like a 30 gram ball not a not even like if those skimmer socks are 16 gram balls yeah like I've only got like 20 grams hanging off anyway sorry that I'm digressing that's my um that was my purchases from KF KFS um when we were in it was in Kyoto as well we went to the Nish, I went to the Nishiki markets and I got some really nice things some beautiful glasses there for my daughter um and I also bought a couple of things for me now I think these are sake bowls but I'm, I don't drink sake um, so I like just put the stitch markers in there. Look how pretty, how pretty is that? And I do love pink. So yeah, so I got that and I like this one more than this one, but it's still cute. I haven't got anything in that one yet. Got to figure out what to put in there. Maybe, maybe chocolates or something. Anyway, um, so that's, that's what I got from, um, the Nishiki markets. That's kind of knitting yarn related. And the last place that I went to was Avril Pepin, and that was quite a way out, actually. It was a fair, um, wasn't too far from the market's place, but it was still a fair way out of town. And, um, but it's fine, you just get in the bus, right? It wasn't a big deal. Um, and my husband very kindly went out with me, and we went to the best ramen place I've ever been to afterwards, because we asked the ladies in, um, in Avril where it's good to eat around here and they told us about this one and you have to um it's like a coin vending machine so you order through the vending machine and then you go sit down and then they just bring it out to you it's crazy anyway this vending machines are big there they actually have a restaurant that you order in the vending machine anyway let me show you what i got from avril so the first thing that i got is this kit now oh, where's the pattern this is for the scribble um the scribble sweater and it's not on Ravelry. So this is it in Japanese. Oh, this is the front of it in Japanese. How cute is that? So they, um, I didn't even see the, they actually had a sample in the sweater. I saw it after I'd already bought it. And I'll show you, I tried on the sample, but I'm glad, I tr I'm glad I did try it on because the sample was in a different, like it had sort of a stone base and that really washed me out. So I'm glad I got this one, which is a different base. So it's a, like a white base. Um, look at that everything's on cones um, this is really lovely it's, um, it's like a soft uh, DK to worsted weight yarn and they sell it all by like 10 gram 10 gram lots so this is 470 but this is a kit so this is 470 grams and then there's I think 55 grams so these are not really my colors these are very primary you know red blue yellow I, I wouldn't normally have picked these but I think I will make it with these. I think like, because it is very different, but it just, red, blue and white just makes me think of school sweater, but it doesn't look like a school sweater. It's a very different, um, it's very different. Yeah, it's not a school sweater. Um, but yeah, I think this, and you only use a tiny little bit of the yellow. It's like 55 grams of this one, I think 20 of this and maybe 15 of this one. But what I did do, because I was umming and ahhing about whether I would like those colors, I, I saw they had the same yarn on the wall in a couple of different colors. So I grabbed 20 grams of um, that mint green and like a light pink. And I thought either if I wanted to swap something out, like maybe I went, oh yeah, maybe I'll go those together, you know, like just in case I didn't want the red and the, I thought they, they at least would work okay. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't decided for sure. But I thought either way, if I have a bit left over from this one, if I have something left, I could um, make something with like a color work something um, and I you know I do like to use and at least I know that's the same yarn so the thing about this pattern 
it's not just in Japanese. There is an English pattern in here. I need to make sure I like take a photo of it or scan it because I'm notorious for losing my printed patterns and this is the only one I have. So I need to like when I finish recording, take a photo. I do that of everything. Like when the kids used to get invitations to parties, I just straight away take a photo so that I, because I was going to lose them. Because they used to take them. They would take them into bed and be like, oh, I'm going to this party. And I'd be like, where's the invite? I don't know where I'm going. What day? What time? So anyway, now I um, take photos of everything. Um, so I got those. I also got some like crazy yarn. This kind of, which I thought um, might work really nice with a ranunculus. I think I got 320 meters of that. So that could be like hold together with something for a, um, a short sleeve ranunculus. And this one, I think I didn't get quite enough of. I think I only got, I thought I was getting 300 and something meters, but I only got 260 meters. So I don't actually know what I'm gonna do with that because I'm not sure, because it's scratchy, all right? Like I don't want that around my neck. That would have to be like in a top or a sweater or something. I mean, it's not crazy scratchy, right? But it's just, it's not what you want around your neck. So, but it just looks so pretty like shimmery. I do, I love sparkle. So yes, I haven't quite, I mean, you can actually order online from there. I prefer not to have to. I don't know what the shipping would be like from Japan, but, um, oh, they also do these things where they show you, they put inside the cone. So they wind it off. They've got this machine. I'll show you a video of them doing the winding. Um, and then they put in there, of course in Japanese, but at least it does say how many grams you've got and the, um, the fiber content. So, and some of these yarns are on Ravelry, most of them are actually, this is the one I couldn't quite find. I sort of fudged it with something else, but yes. And the last thing that I bought from there was um, this cashmere. So I only got, it was expensive. I only got 20 grams of it and it's in like a beige color. And I thought I'll hold that with um, something else. Like 20 grams is maybe three, I think it was 300 meters. Uh, let me see, 300 meters. Hmm. Uh, 260 meters but that's enough for a beanie so if I hold it with something else um, maybe another like soft yarn that would be enough for an Oslo hat or a um, something like Manhattan hat one of those kind of things so yes so that's um, that's what I've bought um, in Japan and I think I, I came out pretty well I didn't go nuts so um, and I managed to, I was actually thinking I was going to have to take these off the cone to get them home, but I'm glad I didn't because I didn't even realize at the time that they put the, the information down here. Um, yeah, so that's what I bought in Japan. I'm going to do what has caught my eye next. And these are just because I've watched a few videos, um, a few YouTube videos. There's things that I've seen in someone's video that I thought, oh, that's really pretty. So one is the um, Ola, Ola Yoke sweater by Ella Gordon. I saw a um, version that Taylor Owen had made, looked really pretty. Anyway, the sweater looks beautiful, so I'll just put a picture, I'll put a picture of everything that I mentioned up there. Um, another one was the Art Deco sweater, but when it's spelled D-E-K-O, which is not how you normally spell Deco, but that's how it's spelled for this sweater. If you look it up with a C, you won't find it. Art Deco with a K sweater by Eleanor Mortensen. Um, that looks really beautiful. Again, another Fair Isle with quite a long yoke. Uh, the Marseille sweater by Petite Knit. I saw that on, I think, Anna of APT Atelier. That looks really nice. I do love a good striped sweater. So that one, um, oh, I saw this reel on Instagram and it was Anka Strick and she had made this sweater called Linu and she made a hood to go over it and that covers the back of the neck and obviously like then you can put the hood down but it just sort of turns the look from a like a detachable hood I think somebody else was saying something like that with a snood but I I do love a hoodie so I've got that in mind now not not necessarily for that sweater but just thinking about that in terms of buying extra yarn or I mean I wouldn't do it with a field sweater but like when I have that extra yarn left over making something like a hood so yes um so that's caught my eye uh, another thing was um, sweater number 28 by my favorite things knitwear that caught my eye um, it was actually a lady handmade I, I liked a lot of her projects this is where I've got some of these ideas from handmade by RJ with some underscores in there I'll put it down underneath 
her work is beautiful. I think she does a lot of test knitting and she had done the sweater number 28. That's what sort of drew me to it. The only thing when I was trying to look at the picture, it looked like there was a little, like a compressed piece of like, like this here, which I have a real thing. I really don't like sweaters that have, it's like for me, there's something wrong with the shaping if it bubbles here. You know, there's like too much fabric for the number of rows or something didn't, something didn't go right. So I'm going to have another look at more projects on that to be sure if it's just, is everybody's sweater have this kind of, this here, you know, thing. Um, another one was the Herringbone Jumper by Norgard Knitters. That just looks so cool with these big balloon sleeves and the drama of the two colours. Um, another one was Coloured Crosses by Anne Wenzel. That looks just amazing all over colour work. So that would have to be like a spread out over a long period of time. Uh, another one was the Purpurea Sweater Light by Tetty Lutzak. Um, she has a podcast, Tetty's Knit Garden, I think. Um, anyway, this version of this lady's in this like snowy grey, light grey, off white colour was gorgeous. Got a really low back neck. So that would be something that might be advantage of having a hood. But that sweater just looks, I love the eyelets around the, the yoke, like where you do the increases. That looks beautiful. And the cables, like little cables turning into big cables. That looks beautiful. Um, I think that's that's all for what's caught my eye. So I'm going to move on to plans. But to be honest, my plans at this stage are a bit, um, I feel like I've thrown everything up in the air because I have all these other plans of things that I want to make. But um, what happens sometimes, I'm not as excited by them as sort of these new things that have come in. And, you know, we're starting a new year and like I still want to make them, but I'm like, Am I going to make them like really soon or maybe not so much? So one thing I want to mention that I'm definitely going to make soon and that's the half and half wrap. So I, I'm 100% on that. I want to make it. It's definitely going to be on the needles, but I don't like having two shawls on the needles at the same time. So I'm going to wait for dotted rays to be finished. Dotted rays is going to live on the couch and, um, and that's where the half and half wrap is going to live as well. So whenever I'm watching TV in the evening, and there's something that I need to not be like um, worried about, like where am I at in the pattern? And I think the dotted rays is perfect for that and the half and half wrap will be. So if you haven't seen before, um, I don't know where my little swatch is. That was my original swatch with, this is gonna be in Pearl Soho Linen Quill in Red Poppy. I was originally gonna use Vintage Celadon, but instead I'm gonna use this um, Baby Bird Blue. So that is a, that's one that has not changed. I'm definitely gonna do it. Um, I've got all these other plans for hats and things now, like I want to make um, another hat with this. I find that sometimes I get on a bit of a kick, so I'm on a bit of a like a, a hat jag at the moment. So that's going to be a hat. I also am like excited about these new yarns, right? Like I, I want to try this one and like I wanted to try that Gilead and I've got this Amoriso one that I want to try and so yeah, kind of other things have sort of jumped in ahead of others. So. In my previous videos, if you've watched, I've had like plan list a mile long and I still want to make all of those, but I think some of those are just going to, like I, I sort of want to, um, some of those ones that I just mentioned, what has caught my eye and like, I'm going to go look at those sales for Camilla and, um, oh, I was going to make Magnolia Bloom. That's a Camilla Vad design. So maybe that's the right time to get that. So anyway, so I feel like I'm not quite and I haven't done my plans for the next four weeks. So even though this is a, the plan section of the video, I feel like all I can say right now for sure that I'm gonna make is coming up is the half and half wrap. And um, the other things I still wanna make like the camisole number four and the kutar top, um, I'm still gonna make those. I'm just not sure when. So. But, it would probably get a bit boring if I keep saying, I'm going to make this, like, when? In two years' time? So I'll just put it aside, and then I'll do a, like, maybe in my next Wednesday video, I'll do a more full. This is kind of what I think, at least for maybe, not the whole year. I can't plan for a whole year. Ugh, I can barely plan for a week. But maybe for, like, the next month um, that I think is either going to be, you know, like, because some of these things are going to be finished soon. Like Magnolia, no, not Magnolia Bloom. Alpine Bloom's almost finished. 
I'm hoping to finish um, the um, the anchor summer shirt by New Year's Day and get that done for the petite knit knit along. Um, and they're, they're my two big tops, right? And Dotted Rays is just going to live by the couch. The skimmer socks are almost finished. Like, I've, I've got top, like, I'm ready to go to cast on new things, but I just am not sure what's actually next. So, you know, and I talked about the stripe pipe sweater, but I had a bit of feedback on some of the colours. So um, I might be swapping some of those out, or I might make the Marseille sweater, right? Like, I got it, like, all the options. So, yes, I'm, and Snow Wonder, but I don't even have the yarn for that. Like, that's a, I, I know I'm going to make it, but I don't actually have the yarn. How annoying. Like, anyway, I'll get there. Um... Other craft, I'll stick this in the end here. There is no other craft. I've been in Japan. I'm not sewing, I'm not doing anything else. Um, but that's what I'm gonna do as soon as I finish this video. I'm gonna like do my plans for the next four weeks, like the last four weeks of um, off school, because I'm a high school math teacher and I've got four more weeks of holidays. And I do have some schoolwork to do, which I can knit and do. So I do have to have some knitting for watching um, videos on some of the schoolwork that I wanna do. But uh, I also plan to sew. So I'm going to sew. I've got to figure out what I'm going to sew. I don't know yet. And I want to warp up my loom. That's their two things like, you know, they, they often happen in January for me because it's when I actually have a bit of a longer stretch of time and I, I can actually sort of get my head around. Like warping up the loom when you don't do it very often, um, like it takes a lot of headspace for me. And I, you also have to do a lot of planning. Like, you know, how long your warp's going to be and everything and which read to use and all that sort of stuff. So, yes. Anyway, that's, um, I think that's it for, I think that's it for this video. Just so you know what's coming up for me. So this one should be, have gone out on the weekend, hopefully. And I'll be back to my normal programming on Wednesday. I'll do another, what I've knit in the last week. And hopefully then I'll have some more firm plans for the next quarter. And so yeah, what's that? That'll be Wednesday the 3rd of January. So I'll have a bit of in mind. Um, I hopefully I've sewed something by then. And oh yes, and I'll also do next weekend, hopefully a video on just Japan. So I didn't, normally if you're new here, I normally at the end I do some personal stuff um, because personal stuff for the last couple of weeks has been Japan, I'm gonna do that in its own little video. Uh, and then you can either watch it or not, right? If you're interested in Japan or if you're interested in what me and the family got up to with a few photos, very few photos, I don't have any photos. Um, I'll do that in a separate video. Not uh, like should be coming out next weekend. Right, okay, I think that's it. I'm gonna get on and get started on my plans and tidy up because there's just stuff everywhere. Um, yes, and I'm still cycling through the washing as well. Right, so thank you so much for watching and um, yeah, hopefully I'll see you next Wednesday. All right, bye. Oh, one last thing I thought I'd just quickly mention. Um, the top that I'm wearing, uh, just if you're new here, this is the Pie Camisole by Nabita Jure and I knit it out of um, Knitting for Olive Cotton Merino and I love this yarn. The gauge is like super tight, it's something like, I think I knit it on 2.5 mil needles and there's like 35 stitches over four inches but it is so worth it. I love it. Anyway, I just thought if you're new here, you might not have seen it. It's um, a really nice design and I'm a math teacher. So the whole pie thing, it's um, yeah, it appeals to me. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.